Medicare for All has become the bumper sticker campaign promise for several 2020 Democratic presidential candidates. But according to new polling, more Americans are focusing on health care costs rather than making sweeping changes or repealing Obamacare. So for more insight, let's turn to Bipartisan Policy Center Senior Vice President and former director of the Senate Budget Committee, Bill Hoagland. Bill, thank you for coming on the show. And, you know, uh, the health care industry has really been thrilled by the fact that the former vice president, Joe Biden, has entered the race. They kind of see him as a, as a savior to what so many of his Democratic opponents want, Medicare for all. Uh, I know you're not advising the former VP, but if you were, I mean, he, his health care platform still has not come out yet. So if you were advising him, what do you think the vice president's uh, health care platform should be. Well, you're right. I'm not advising him, but if I were advising him, I'd say be pragmatic about it. Uh, Medicare for All is an extremely expensive program. Those people who've looked at it and estimated its cost could be anywhere from 30 to 35 trillion dollars over a 10-year period. And just put that in perspective, if you were to put that, if you were to try to pay for that, you'd almost have to double the personal income taxes that we collect over the next 10 years. So I would advise simply that look at, be practical about it. If you're going to do health care reform, it also, no surprise coming from the Bipartisan Policy Center, I would argue, be bipartisan about it. Build a pawn. Don't talk about repeal and replace, and don't talk about Medicare for all. Talk about building a pawn, the Affordable Care Act, which you were a part of, uh, Vice President Obama, or with, with the President Obama and putting together. So I think it, uh, that's where I would advise him to go. Look at building and improving upon the Affordable Care Act. It needs improvement, no question about it. There still are issues out there, significant issues as it relates to the cost of health care for millions of Americans, but there are ways to improve upon the existing act to make it more affordable and extend, expand coverage to, to Americans who still need coverage. And then you look at, you know, kind of the middle of the road candidates, Beto O'Rourke, uh, Buttigieg, Klobuchar, uh, they have not adopted a full-throated support of, of Medicare for all. They're kind of stuck in the middle. So what do you see them running on? I would imagine that you're going to see them starting to run on something called what's Medicare for some, an mm -hmm. expansion of Medicare for maybe those from the age of 55 to 65 or 50 to 65. You're starting to see legislation being introduced up here that goes along those same lines. So I think it, they're looking at a ways of expanding coverage, but at the same time doing it in a reasonable way that's paid for and, and doesn't add to the federal deficit going forward also. You spent many years on Capitol Hill. I believe you said 20, 25 years on Capitol Hill. I, I'm, I'm curious, President Trump has now really been uh, pushing Congress to take some action on, on health care. Uh, given your time and tenure on the Hill, what's the likelihood of them actually getting anything done now on health care? I think the things that can get done are probably those dealing with drug prices right now. The legislation is moving both in the House and in the Senate as it relates to addressing drug uh, prices. I think there's bipartisan support for that. I don't think going back and reopening, repeal and replace of the Affordable Care Act is going to happen at all in this Congress. But I do think there are things they can do at the margin. Also, there's a thing called a, a surprise billing. This is the fact where people who who find up they get a bill because they are they were out of network, so to speak, in terms of their services they got, and they were surprised when they got the bill. There is legislation here that I think can move forward on surprise billing that could be helpful uh, to man, many Americans out there. And final question, I mean, do you think it's smart for these Democratic candidates to make Medicare for All uh, kind of a litmus test heading into these primaries? Uh, I should, in fairness, I worked for Republicans the entire time that I was up here, and I would think, I don't think it's a smart move for these uh, candidates to move for Medicare for All, and, and quickly, basically because they don't tell us how they're going to pay for it, too. All right, well, Bill Hoagland, Hoagland thank Hoagland. you so thank, much. Thank you, Kristen.